Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. This is another video in the series of the Cloud Resume Challenge. In the last video, we have split up our Lambda functions ready to add our code into it. And in this video, what we're going to do is actually go through and add our put logic into our Lambda function, which is going to insert items into our database. Now, this is probably going to be one of the biggest videos or the bigger videos that uh, throughout the whole series, we're going to be talking about Docker as part of a local invocation. We're going to be talking about IAM and permissions because we need access to DynamoDB. And also we talk about the AWS SDK, which we're going to need to interact with DynamoDB from our code. Uh, so there's a lot to cover, so let's jump into it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be configuring our Lambda for putting the values into our database. So in the last video, we split up our Lambda so that we had two functions. And in the video before that, we also set up DynamoDB. So we're ready to go and actually start putting things into our database and starting to count the number of users. So if you remember from the Cloud Resume Challenge, the instructions are to uh, have a user count. So when people visit the website, we're going to increment a value in our database and we're going to start counting the users. So that's what we'll do today. And now, in order to do that, we actually have to introduce a, a number of different topics. So we're going to talk about the AWS SDK. We're going to talk about local invocation with AWS SAM uh, because we want to test our code, uh, test our how is that working, is that accessing the database. And as we talk about local invocation, we'll also need to talk about permissions, permissions locally and permissions on AWS as well, and how we assign permissions to Lambda. So quite a few topics uh, to discuss today. And also there's Docker thrown in there as well because you need Docker for the the local invocation, but we'll get to that in just a second. Um, but yeah, big topic, let's jump in. So first of all, so I mentioned the AWS SDK then. What is the AWS SDK and what does it do? Well, what I've actually got here is I've got my code that actually does the put into DynamoDB and it's already set up. So that's actually going to use the AWS SDK. So if you look here, you've got AWS SDK and this is this is for Go. So my code here, so before you um, run, away, run away scared, you might be doing this in Python, you might be doing this in Node.js, but the concepts are going to be the same. Maybe you can't necessarily copy paste exactly what I have here, but that's, actually, that's a good thing because part of the Cloud Resume Challenge is actually going through the docs, figuring things out yourself as well. So don't worry too much about this being in Go because it's not actually a great deal of code that we'll be writing. So follow along, uh, it will still kind of make sense. So for the SDK then, so the SDK is Software Developer Development Kit um, for AWS. And what they've got is they've got those for every different language. So what the SDK is, is basically a wrapper around the different APIs within AWS. It's nothing particularly magic. All of the AWS services actually expose uh, endpoints, APIs, that if you request, they would create resources, update resources, etc. But what AWS have done is created these uh, client libraries, these uh, libraries that exist within the different languages that you could use as uh, sort of helper functions uh, to do things just a little bit easier. Uh, I don't know of anyone that doesn't use the SDKs. Um, I'm not even 100% sure if it's possible, but maybe one day I'll give it a go. Uh, you basically don't need to. You can just use the SDK every time. And for instance, in, in Lambda environment, the SDK and things like that are bundled for you. So uh, sometimes it's quite easy. So. This is our. This is my main file within Go. So my my Lambda, and I'm just running you through this real quick. So there's a bit of boilerplate up here that I've got setting up a session. Let's ignore that for now. And uh, let's have a look at this here. So here's my command for updating DynamoDB, and I'm going to add in my item. In terms of configuration, so what I'm doing here is passing in a table name. So in this case, I'm saying access my Cloud Resume Challenge database that we created in a previous video. And then what I'm saying is I want you to access the key with the ID visitors. So before we set up the DynamoDB and we set up with the ID field, and what we're gonna do now is set that value to be visitors. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set an expression here. So we've got add visitors and you've got this little increment here. And we've got, we've got down here is these expression attribute values. So those are basically substitute values that are gonna go into our add expression. So basically here, we're just gonna say add to the visitors uh, a one. And that's from down here. Then we've got some more little, a bit more boilerplate down here, some error handling. And also again, if you remember from a couple of videos ago, we set up our cause configs. We're gonna to need to do the same thing here because we're gonna call this also from the browser. So for now, just gonna allow everything to that Lambda function uh, and we will come back to that also later. So let me jump back to my instructions. So that's the AWS SDK, and that was a very quick run through of uh, updating the, the DynamoDB to count. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. In fact, no, let me, let me show you just now because I've already deployed this so I can show you it working. So this is the endpoint URL that we've got for our put function. If I go ahead and just refresh on this, in fact, before I refresh, let's have a look at the value. So we've got 17 uh, people in our database. I've just been sat here refreshing this before I set record. 
And if I go ahead and hit refresh on this, so I'm going to do this a couple of times. So let's do three times, run my function three times. Now, if I go back to DynamoDB, I hit refresh on the database. Now we can see 20 visitors, boom. So that's working as I expected with the code that I just showed you within this main file. Now, what else is there? So in order to create this, basically, I have written that locally. And the way that I have done that is also by using this SAM local invoke function. So AWS SAM also has this nice little helper function that lets you run things locally. In order to run this on your machine, you're going to need to install Docker. Uh, too much to talk about Docker right now in this uh, particular video. But if you're going to Google and just stick in like Docker quick start, I mean, it's been written about a lot. It's a very, very popular, very ubiquitous tool. So I'm sure you can find uh, a tutorial about that. And what I've done here, so in my make file, I've added a new command. So we've got invoke put. And what I'm doing here is I'm also doing a build. So I'm building my code. And then what I'm doing is doing a sam local invoke and invoking my put function. So that function there references in my LAM, in my template file, the name of my resource. And with that, it basically means that you could swap that out for the get function and then you could test uh, or you could run locally uh, different Lambda functions that are defined in your SAM template, which is pretty cool. So I've added that into my make file and that's going to allow me to do a local invocation. In fact, let me show you how that works. So if I uh, make, what was it? It was make invoke put. Let's see how that works. So that's going to do a build. Uh, it's going to build my code and then it's going to invoke it locally. Now there's also something we need to talk about here, which is about permissions. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. Let me add my password. And we should hopefully see that go through successfully. Boom. Okay, so that's now kind of emulated the Lambda being run locally. And that's nice for when you're doing local development. So if you're just testing things, hacking around, it's much nicer to test it locally like that than it is to just push everything up to AWS. So what I mentioned about permissions then, so there's a little bit of nuance here. So if you look here, we've got this AWS Vault exec. We were using this in some other places before, but the reason that we need that is we are passing in our AWS credentials into the SAM local invoke function. And the reason for that is so that our Lambda function actually has access to the DynamoDB. Now, if you were to use this command only, when you deployed your code, also you're going to find that also your Lambda function doesn't have access to your DynamoDB because by default, uh, Lambda itself is sort of locked down. So you can request things externally, but you can't request uh, generic internal resources from AWS without explicitly allowing them. So I can just show you how that is set up. So if you look here, the way that we've done that is also by applying this policy. So AWS SAM is kind of wild. It's got all these different presets. And let me see if I can find my tab, policy templates. So it's got these pre-built policy templates for you. And one of them that we've got here is this DynamoDB CRUD policy, which is what we're going to use in this case. So you could break down your policies and have them really fine grained, but these are some out of the box ones that AWS SAM gives you, which is perfect for our use case. And what we're going to do is, let me jump into my template, is for my put function is basically add this property policies and DynamoDB CRUD policy. That is actually the name of the pre-built policy from AWS SAM. So if I go back here, that is this one here. And what we're going to do is apply that policy to the table name Cloud Resume Challenge. So if you look at that in the context, so for that Lambda function, what we're doing is we're allowing access to the DynamoDB table. And that is in the AWS environment. And then if I go back, we've also got in the make file that I mentioned before, we've got this uh, AWS Vault exec, which is going to give us credentials to invoke with the local environment as well. So we've got local invocation that will work with our code, and we've got remote invocation that will work with the code when it's up in AWS, which is very good. Let me just check my list. So that was very quick, but have I missed anything? AWS credentials with exec, uh, no, we've been through that. Lambda permissions, we've been through that as well. Uh, let me just run back through as well. So if you do a quick refresh and we can see that pulling through into DynamoDB. And basically that's it. Let me just show you the uh, IAM policies. So over here, this is in IAM in AWS. We've got our get function and we've got our put function. So let me show you the difference between these two because these have now got separate policies. If you remember, if I go back to my template, so my put function down here has got this policy applied and my get function does not, not yet anyway. It will need it later when we start fetching from the database in the next video. But let's have a look at those. So I've got those two open actually right now. So this is our get function and this is what it looked like before. So this is with the default IAM setup. So IAM is the access management within AWS. It's, it handles policies for people and also for 
resources and things like that. It, what has access to what uh, and things like that. So that's the get on, which is the default SAM IAM template. And you'll see in here, we've got X-Ray. X-Ray is a monitoring service for uh, within AWS. And we've also got Lambda basic execution role, which is just a, an out of the box managed policy from AWS. And if we open it up here, you can see what that what these uh, different policies come with. So you can see here, we've got access to write to CloudWatch logs. And let me jump over into the put function now. And what we're going to see is we've also got a policy now applied here, which is what we've just applied, which is for DynamoDB. And that's what's going to allow us to run our function in AWS to access DynamoDB. So that's our connection between our Lambda function and Dynamo database. And that is pretty much it. As I said, it was very quick. There's a lot in there. Have a go, have a play about with the AWS SDK and see how the different put functions have a dig into DynamoDB, DynamoDB structures, uh, searching for keys, deleting, adding, changing things, uh, and see if you can get that configured so that you're adding the count value into DynamoDB. There's a bunch of different ways you could do it. This is just one way that you can do it. Um, but yeah, have a go. Okay, so there you have it. So we're actually adding in items into our DynamoDB now and we are counting our users, but the only thing is we can't actually see them on the interface just yet. In order to do that, we actually need to update our get endpoint, uh, which is the moment is stubbed, and we'll do that in the next video. So, yep, if you're following along, then I'll see you in the next video.